Folks, it's now good late morning to all of you. I want to certainly thank you for your patience and understanding. What a tribute to the terrific man, Jerry, and all of his accomplishments and to his very nice family. So to uh, all of you, again, I extend our appreciation for being with us this morning. Without further ado, it's my distinct honor to introduce Pastor Lewis Spees from the Central Baptist Church of Milno, who will lead us in this morning's ceremony. Not dry, or you some people would say I'm frequently dry, however, very more true than other times. Someone once asked, obviously, funerals are on one hand very serious, but on the other hand, we need to laugh together, or and certainly we're crying together also. So I just found this interesting. Someone once asked uh, the well-known theologian A.W. Tozer out of the uh, Christian and Missionary Alliance tradition, what is the one thing you do before immediately before you go out and speak? You're expecting some dramatic statement, uh, reading scripture or praying, which he did. But he said, I always check to make sure my flies up. <laughs> I thought <laughs> characterizes your husband so well <laughs> in, in, a, in a very real sense. You always check to make sure you had his spot or something. And to the best of my knowledge, it always was. <laughs> I'd like to read to you. From the Gospel of John, one of the wonderful place in, in the 14th chapter. <clears throat> all of those of you who have gotten any age, you know, when you move into the bifocals and our church and trifocals, it really is an interesting way of juggling the books when you read the right read it. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, but you also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way. No. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except me. Later in that 14th chapter of the Gospel of John, he says, Our Lord, I should say, offer this blessing. Peace I leave this, my peace I give to you. Not as the world is. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be. Jesus Christ was certainly in the words of the old creed, very God, a very God, but he was also a very man, a very man, which means he was human in every way. And when his dear friend Lazarus died, and his Lazarus's sisters Mary and Martha were in great pain. The scriptures uh, recount the shortest verse in the scriptures that Jesus wept. Jesus wept because he lost a good friend, and his heart was pained by the pain within the hearts of Mary and Martha. And he offered this wonderful testimony. I am the resurrection and the life. He believes in me. Though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He asks this very important question that Jesus asks every one of us. Do you believe in this? 
pray this morning. We want to give God thanks for the gift of the resurrection. Christians mourn. Our mourning is real. We don't deny death. When we're separated from loved ones, we feel great pain. We also know that this is the close of a chapter in Jerry's life, but it's not the close of his life. There is an eternal life before to live and to be enjoyed. And the door into that eternal life is the resurrection of Jesus Christ and our embracing him as our Lord and our Savior. So today, as we pray, I want to thank God for the gift of that resurrection so that we know this is not the end. This is not the end. Secondly, you are the greatest testimony to Jerry's effect on your lives. I was trying to think of a movie, Rita, and I know Woody Allen came up with one, but I couldn't remember the name. So then my brain went to... Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump. You remember Forrest was in every important historical event and that ever occurred. When I look at those pictures, Jerry Bedford was involved <laughs> in so many things with so many people. And, and not just as a, I think I'll put my name on the list so it looks cool, but actually giving himself to that organization because of that influenced so many people for good. And so we want to give thanks to God for the life of Jerry Banks. And I want to pray for you and all of you. Our Heavenly Father's arms are wide enough to bring you all so comfort you Lord. I will pray for you. Father, thank you for the gift of the resurrection that is ours in Jesus Christ to celebrate his birth at this time. Four months later, Lord, we will celebrate Easter, the resurrection, because of that resurrection, because of his birth and sinless life and death on Calvary's cross and resurrection. We know that this is not the end. Yes, we as Christians weep, but we do not weep as those who have no hope, because our hope is firmly placed in you, and you, O oh God, are reliable. So thank you for that promise. That this is the end of this chapter, our earthly sojourn at this point, but it is not the end of our life. Thank you for the life of Jerry Ben. What an incredible man he was. And the love letters that were written on each one of our hearts will remain with us until we end our days. Thank you for the gift of memory. Thank you for the gift. Jerry Bennett, a beautifully wonderful I want to pray this morning for his family, for his wife, for his son, his daughter, for his children and his grandchildren, or for all of those who mourn his passing. Thank you that we continue to do during this very difficult time in our lives. Thanks for the gift of the resurrection. The gift of Jerry Benford, the gift of family. We pray in Jesus' name. We can number of you have a song sheet, the old rugged cross, and we want to sing as well as the Anthony Mass, the first, the third, and the fourth verse of this. Thank you. 
most beautiful images we have of Jesus is as the shepherd. And in the 10th chapter of John, we read these words, I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and know by my own, as the Father knows me, and as I know Share with you a psalm that is very familiar to so many people. Third psalm. <coughs> that what is my shepherd? I shall not want. They may to lie down in green pastures. The sun is still orders. He is stored by my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Me, Lord, walk thou in the shadow of death. I will hear no evil. Thou art the my rod and my staff. Thou preparest the table for the wicked, the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest this light. My father, for this person shall follow me in the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Chester and Mary, Jason, Central Baptist, John Man, used to say, forever, 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 forever. A long time, I bet the fans of Michigan football were wondering whether they would ever beat 
Ohio State Board of Things. So it's all the garbage and ganders who are here. It's a tale to the victors. So um, we can celebrate with you. That maize and blue was a prominent color feature throughout the Benfer household. A tribute. We'll kind of have plenty of time to remember Jerry at the center table. I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that. I just want to share one memory that I had about Jerry, then of a conversation. Of Maya Angelou, the poet, it's so appropriate. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. People will never forget how you made them. You know, there are some people in life who bring joy after whenever you see. Get a smile on your face and your heart leaves. There are others. I've often quoted this in a sermon. It's a line from the rabbinical students go to the rabbi and they ask him if there's a blessing for the Tsar. And the rabbi said, Yes, God bless and keep the Tsar. On from us. Jerry was one of those individuals who always brought joy. was filled with love. And when we met Jerry, he instantaneously connected Jerry. It's the dream of the other day. They remind me of Stiller and Mira. <laughs> What a wonderful marriage. Oh, chapter of Romans, God speaks about spiritual things. He writes this I think to the gift of encouragement. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. Who swords let him. Sword. A little bit further in the 13th verse, Paul writes, Let love be without hypocrisy. What is evil? What is good? Distribute to the needs of the saints and practice hospitality. Jerry was an exhorter. Jerry was incredibly sweet, was an encourager. And I always enjoy being that is perhaps the most lasting impression I will have of Jerry. Always made the world brighter, and it was always a better place. Calls I'd like to share with you a couple of verses from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. They also happen to be my father's favorite verses. And why am I going to share this? Because when Jerry had his surgery, we had an Incredible talk around the bed, and it became very deeply theological. You know, Jerry could be very serious at times, and just very encompassed by joviality uh, at, at other times. But this is probably one of the most intense theological discussions I've had with someone. Over the course of my 30 plus year in 
this. And I will just share a little bit about that. But Rita told me afterward, I think that that conversation was an important conversation because somehow it changed Jerry. Is that right? I don't want to misrepresent that, but it, it was a great, a great conversation. Paul wrote to the Ephesians in the second chapter, three short verses. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared before him that we should walk in them. I suspect before you have a serious surgery, any and just as, as a very brief side, like he pulled through that so wonderfully well. And then he had the surgery on the one hand, and he pulled through that. <clears throat> and he had the surgery on the other hand, and he pulled through that. And I know when I have been talking with other individuals, there's that, that sense of frustration. He went through so much and fought through so much, and then this comes along. So if you allow me just two minutes before I reflect on this. We had a man at Central Baptist, John Denblaker, who was an incredible man, and he retired and moved away. And that that's a great that was a great loss in our church and a great loss to me, thankfully. About that time, a friend of Jerry's from the Army Airfield Museum, Ed Lazarchik, came into the picture. And, and Ed Lazarczyk and I developed a very close friendship very quickly. And three years later or so, Ed dies of cancer. And then, of course, there was a gap. And then I met Jerry and Rita on, I think, for the first time, we had a close encounter of a meaningful guy in our Nashville trip. And, and then I grew closer to them, and Jerry became a very special person in the life of our church and in my life, and, and now he died of cancer. So I wish I could tell you that I never have questions of the Lord, questions of the Lord with great regularity. And so I find myself saying, what gives, Lord? You bring someone in and you take them out. I don't understand this. But one thing I do understand is that my Heavenly Father loves me with an unbridled passion, and that he loves each one of us, and that he brings people into lives and takes them out for reasons I don't always understand. But I know that he is reliable, and our God is faithful, and our God is true. And theologians have always argued over a great question. What do you do with pain? What do you do with pain? And they've always pointed to the cross of Jesus Christ. And God suffered great pain when our father and son died on the cross. And, and there was a Christian theologian, C.S. Lewis, who was a bachelor for the for, for a majority of his life, and he finally fell in love with his woman, George Daly. And after two or three years, she died of cancer. And his faith was rocked to the core, but he came back even stronger. And he realized one truth, and the congregation has heard this from the pulpit, but it becomes very important and meaningful to us during these times. The price of pleasure is always pain. The more you invest into someone's life, the more pain that comes when that relationship ends. The only way you can assure yourself of no pain is to develop no meaningful ties with anyone in life. And I pity the poor person who ends his or her life and has never developed a meaningful relationship with anyone. 
but our God is big enough to take all of our pain and all of our questions. You parents, your children, when they were very young, would go to you and you would act on their very best behalf. But your children, or maybe you as a child, might say, I hate you for what you've done. I can't understand why you did this. And you're thinking to yourself, if I tried to explain to you why this happened, you would not understand what I'm explaining. But I'm doing this for your best. And I found this to be a characteristic of my life with my God. Looking back to Fiddler of the Roof, just in the last couple months, familiar with that story, Teddy's best friend was God, and he was always talking to him. relationship that can be. So I just want to say if you have questions today, you can take them to a loving God. He's not going to cast you out. He's going to mourn with you. And in the appropriate time, the spirit will begin to speak to you and try to bring you back to a place of healing. You will allow him the conversation with Jerry was revolved around one simple thing. He <clears> felt <throat> that there were some things in his life that he could never be forgiven of. Never met an individual other than Jesus who has been perfect. We've all blown it a lot in our lives. We've always made a lot of mistakes and we've hurt people along the way. Hopefully not intentionally, but we did maybe even intentionally at times. And, and Jerry and I had a deep conversation about that. And it came back that our God is a forgiving God if we go to him and lay all of our burdens and garbage before him. Doesn't hold back. Jerry gave you the gift of this friendship. He gave me the gift of this friendship. Parent, as a husband. But in reality, the greatest thing is friendship. Because Joseph said to us, no longer do I call you servants. I call you friends. What a blessing. So I guess in tribute to the life of a person who had been a dear friend to me, I can offer you this day Jesus as a friend. Don't hesitate to go have questions. You have aches. Our congregation knows my mother died last year on Christmas Day. So, this is a very hard time for me, also. But what gets me through every day and will get you through every day is the faithfulness of my Lord and the faithfulness of my God. I can only offer you that. As the greatest Christmas gift, because that's what he gave us on the first Christmas. It's love, it's affection, our salvation, our freedom, our eternal life. So as we draw this portion to a close, I, as much as anyone, am looking forward to those stories we're going to tell. Please listen to these words. This is a description. This is a description that our God gives us. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, 
there was no more C. I want you to know, Rita, that doesn't mean there's no more seashore because I know how much Ocean City meant to you and Jared. Very quickly, what theologians feel is at the time that this was written, the sea represented something certainly very mysterious. And when all of us look at the ocean, we wonder, no, what's going on under there where we cannot see? And for the ancients, the sea was a very fearful thing. But there's going to be no fear. Stuff hidden under the waves. Then I, John, saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride for And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be. I'm speaking this to you and to all of the Gentiles. And God will wipe away every tear from your eyes. And there will be no more death. There will be no more sorrow. There will be no more crying. There will be no more pain. For the old order of things is passed away. Then he who made this. He was sitting on the throne, he said, Behold, I make all things new. He said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to those who deserve it. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God. And he shall be going to sing as our closing hymn, just the first of the last verses of Amazing Grace. And if I do that. <coughs> face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.
Esther, I thank you. I also would like to say thanks to Nancy for her playing of the organ. Much appreciated. Uh, and each of you for coming. We would like to give you the opportunity to come forward and pass by the casket to pay your final respects. While you're doing that, members of the immediate family are going to step out of the room. Uh, and then after everyone else is exited, we will allow them they will take their own time or privacy to spend some time with their beloved husband, father, and grandfather before uh, they join all of you, which I've been asked to extend an invitation to the Grove in Centerton, where there will be a luncheon <coughs> served and a chance for quite a bit of fellowship. Now, Jerry did a lot of pre planning, and Rita will vouch for this. And one of his concerns is he wanted stories told. So please put your thinking caps on between now and your time of arrival at Centerton mm -hmm. so you can share those stories. He wanted laughter, celebration. That's pretty close to a direct quote, am I right? So uh, please do that. Uh, he wanted this to be a celebration. A guy like me who's selfish just wanted it to happen about 10 or 15 years from now. Uh, but I know if I feel that way, most of you do as well. So again, I want to thank you for coming, and again, we'll begin to excuse you, give you the chance to come forward and pay your final respects, therefore giving the family a few moments of privacy before you all